So we play a lot of really hardcore shooters here on the channel. We play Stalker, we play Tarkov, and all of them have something in common. It's either the dopamine effect you get when you kill someone in Tarkov knowing that the guy you just killed has lost everything he had with him, and that was your fate too if you didn't want that battle. You know, the stakes are the highest, right? And when you survive, you get that rush in your veins. And that's a really cool feeling. Other times, we have to go through the scariest places in Stalker. We have to survive the hardest zones for little to no reward. But we still keep coming back because nothing comes close and we want to experience those same emotions again and again. And this is where Road to Vostok comes in and absolutely combines my favorite mechanics from both Stalker and Tarkov into a single one. And if I mention DayZ, the same will be true. Now it's not released yet, but we do have a public demo and this is some gameplay from that demo. Now I don't really go outside of gameplay much with my content and I do want to keep it that way, but every now and again a game comes out and when it's something so good and refreshing like this one, I gotta talk about it because I have a feeling it is right up your alley. You have limited to no HUD, you got yourself an open world with survival mechanics, deadly AI, cool guns, cool graphics, awesome different types of weather, I mean this game just takes all the boxes. Now if you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about or even even what this game is all about, I'm going to give a bit of an intro to this one and why it might interest you and then we're going to be focusing on some of the really cool mechanics that I've noticed while playing the public demo. Which by the way, it's completely free, up on Steam right now, if you want to check it out, you can if you want to, I'm going to leave a link for that down below. Oh, and keep in mind that this entire game is made by a single developer, which is just crazy to me, talk about being talented. But anyways, Road to Vostok, and I'm taking this right off their website, but it is a hardcore, single player survival game, set in a post-apocalyptic border zone between Finland and Russia. And you can really tell this game has definitely taken some inspiration from Stalker for example, which is really cool to see because like Stalker, instead of a huge open world, the game is going to be made from individual maps, which are unique areas and based on real world locations. All of these maps are connected to each other and each and every one of them has different difficulty ratings depending on the NPC's AI. So in Stalker for example, and I am going to bring this comparison a lot because I feel it's more comparable for my fan base, but in there, as you know, every time you go up north, the game gets harder. But the loot is better and more rewarding, so even when you're not doing a specific mission, you still have a reason to go up there. In here, it's the same thing, and on this case, every time you travel east and towards Vostok, the game gets harder and the loot gets better. Which, by the way, talking of loot, you're gonna be able to scavenge, storage, and craft hundreds of items from weapons, tools, consumables, medical items military gear, electronics, apparel and much much more and this all ties in really nicely as you're going to be able to see later. Because this is where the dynamic world events come in. Things like crash sites, hairdrops, ambushes, special trading posts. All of these random events are going to be in the game. Now ambushes are pretty self-explanatory and I would reckon the further east you go, the more dangerous and probably more usual they become. And while we still don't know anything about these events, I think it's safe to assume that crash sites for example will be good places to find electronic components. And airdrops could have all kinds of supplies, ranging from guns to ammo all the way to apparel. Who knows? It all depends on how it's implemented, but the possibilities are endless. Now once you do get those items, what are you going to do with them? Well, we know that trading is going to be in the game, we're going to be able to trade, buy and sell items to specialized in-game traders. These traders can also be used for services like medical care or weapons maintenance. So it's very possible that a specialized medical trader would want to buy you any medical items you might find, but not really be interested in other things such as weapon repair kits or anything of the sort. The looting also seems to be pretty immersive and intuitive. You can pretty much loot everything you see from mail posts to cupboards, fridges, trash cans. It's really good with some spare loot on the ground. Now let's say that you don't want to sell your stuff and maybe just keep it. Well, we're also going to have something called shelters. We don't really know how they look like. It could be a tent, a hole in the ground, a cave or a fenced-off house. We don't know, but they are all different in terms of size and customization. 
so base building is probably going to be a thing, even if on a small scale. Here's the catch though, the only way you can save your game progress is by being in one of these shelters. Now they are always available to you and for the most part easy to find, but you never know what you have to go through to reach them. So going from shelter to shelter to keep saving your game could be harder than it looks, depending on what's in the middle. Now, since we are on the topic of going from zone to zone, something interesting caught my eye. According to the website, the game world is divided by a border zone and a physical border. The physical border you cannot cross. The border zone can be crossed by using crossing points, which will eventually lead you to Vostok. Each of these crossing points has a unique game mechanic and a certain level of risk associated with them. Now, this doesn't say much, but a few weeks ago, I believe, the game dev showed us a very rough boat mechanic in which he was driving around a boat and that could potentially be a way to cross these different areas which I think is really interesting. So you're not just going from map to map, you're physically crossing it yourself which is really cool. When you open your inventory tab and look right in the center, you can, well, see your character. In here, there are slots for your head, face, torso, rig, backpack, leg, ends, and feet. And I don't think these are gonna be cosmetic only. If you look further left on the vital areas, you can see hypothermia is a thing. So possibly you might need to have warmer clothes for the winter zones. If not, you're probably gonna freeze and might have to use a campfire to get in tip-top shape again. There are so many different states on that vital area alone that I I won't even start counting, but you see where I'm going. We might even need to wear gas masks to keep that radiation off, or maybe some radiation pills. Who knows? One thing that does interest me is the mental aspect and what happens when it's too low. In Stalker, specific mutants can make you commit suicide. And that's all I'm going to say knowing that there are no monsters in this game, but rather starvation, cold, dehydration, etc. What happens when that bar reaches zero? Very interesting. Now the game culminates in Vostok. This is the further east area of the game and the only thing we know is that it's a dangerous and mysterious zone. The moment you cross the border by using a crossing point and enter Vostok, you are inside the permadeath zone. If you die in Vostok, you lose everything including your shelter items and your save files. So it is an absolute permadeath, you lose everything and gotta start all over again. Now this is what really interests me, because if I can have fun playing the game without going to Vostok, why would I possibly want to go there in the first place and possibly risk days of grinding? Honestly, I have no idea, probably something really worth it, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. If implemented correctly, I think it's going to be amazing, if not, people are not gonna touch it, but regardless, I can't wait. The one thing that crosses my mind of why I would wanna go to Vostok, for example, let's say the area you are in, which is like right next to Vostok or any of the permadeath zones, has no water. And you're far away from a water zone, right? Or some place where you can find water, and by water I mean any essential item. In that case, you are absolutely obliged to go to Vostok to find that water. If not, you die. So that's one way you might want to go there. And the effectiveness of your playthrough will be in how many days you manage to survive. That could be really fun. Again, we'll have to wait and see. In any case, I can't wait. Now, moving on to the guns now. I gotta say, the visual recall is not too bad, it's actually pretty good, but the camera shake is really, really noticeable, especially when you go full auto. You do have stamina bars for both you, your body and your arms, so by always holding your weapon in like a high ready pose, that stamina is eventually gonna wear off, and specifically more so when you either aim your weapon or shoot your weapon. Once zeroed, it is very hard to keep on target. And I almost forgot dual rendered scopes, which seem to have no effect on FPSs, which is really, really cool. Now, with this being a single player game and besides you and the elements, the only other enemy you have are the NPCs. How smart they are is going to be key. Now, in this iteration of the demo, they are not the smartest, they do flank around, but the developer stated that this is far away from the finished product. One thing he mentioned though was the player detection. He gave a really cool example of how you can hide behind a tree and if you don't cross a specific threshold they are not going to be able to spot you. In addition to this, using camo patterns that blend in with the environment is also going to affect this. So if you are in a wooden area like this and use the correct ammo type, you are much more harder to spot compared 
comparing to using a bright red coat, for example. So yeah, the game is looking super interesting. I don't think we have anything like this in gaming right now, especially not a single player first person shooter for sure, but honestly, can't wait for the full release. Probably a few years ahead, but I still felt like doing this video to share some light on the game so we can all follow this project and cheer for its conclusion, I guess. <laughs> Different video today for sure. On Thursday though, we have a great one coming up and I'm sure you're gonna like it. Until then, have a good one and I will see you guys on the next one.